Hi guys, my name is Nico and this is the Automation Gym. Today we're going to look at the Logton API connector, what is it and how to use it. Let's jump into config and start configuring one. Now we've probably already seen it since version 12.3. It was creeping in the background. This is the API connector. This is where you can find it on every single block on the output side. You can see this little AC. And whenever you tick it, this is what comes up, the new API connector. Now, this is both an input and an output. It's being used by quite a lot of different things. It's being used by the digital showroom experience. It's being used by the Touch Pure Flex. It's being used by um, the NFC Code Touch and every single device that is fit for purpose, uh, that needs multiple inputs and outputs, but already knows what to do with them. Now, because of that, we can also use it for much more than just switching things on and off. And we can send a lot of information to different blocks at the same time. Now, what do we actually need to be able to send HTTP commands or API commands to it is a virtual text input and a user to be able to send them to. Now let's create a virtual text input. Give it any name you want. In my case, it's going to be just called example VTI for virtual text input. And as the AC connector or the API connector is both an input and an output, the input is gonna be on the left-hand side. It might look a little bit weird, um, but it's gonna be absolutely fine. This is not really going to uh, have anything else to do with the functionality. So now we want to create a user, add new user. I'm just gonna call him test. And I'm going to give him a very, very simple password of test123, test one two three apply that is ready and now we want to manage his permissions now in terms of permissions we only need two things first one is web interface and app so he can use basic authentication whenever uh, he's been requested and he's pushing commands through and the other one is under functions we want to give him the example vti or in our case it's example vti in your case it might be called showroom it could be uh, called API input. It's just the virtual text input that you've created with any name that's been given to it. Apply, close this, and there it is. Our test input or test user is ready and set. If we save in the mini server, that's gonna go through and we'll be ready to send a few commands. Where can you find these commands? You can find them obviously online. If you go to Google and just type in Logson API, the very first link that comes on top is going to be the documentation API. And then we don't need the communication with mini server. We don't need a structure file. It is all the way down to the bottom. It's called API connector and the API commands is what we want to click on. Now in here, in this PDF, you can see uh, the information and the structure of every single command. The command that we're going to use today to show is going to be the set command and we're simply going to switch the lights on switch the lights off and also show you how to operate a switch block toggle it on and off whatever the command's being sent now as you can see here's the syntax that's being used you need the name or the short description of the function block you need the input and you need the value that we're sending to it the value can be depending on what the input is obviously one or zero it can be a pulse or it can also be zero to hundred percent, depending on what you're using it for. Let's jump into config and see how that works. Now I'm just going to grab a node and let's create a command for my mini server on the local network. We need the IP of the mini server. We need every single command is going to start with the same base, which is going to be def SPS IO. And then we want to use the name of our virtual text input that we created and the one that is connected to the block. In our case, it's called example VTI. And now from here on, we start creating the command, which is going to be set. And now let's see if I actually don't know the names, how am I going to use it? So I'm going to be switching on the lighting controller. So I need a short description. If you click on I for more information, there's a short description, Lico. Then I want to switch the lights on and there's an input called on that we're going to use and I'm just going to provide a quick pause to it and that's all. So if we go back in here, it's going to be Lico 
on and just a quick pause to it. The information in here in the command is separated by semicolons. So let's copy this and let's show you how you can execute it. I'm also going to start live view so you can see it in action in real time. So if I go to any browser, if I open a new tab, so you'll be able to see it in real time. I'll put the command in here that we've created. As soon as we press enter, if you're already authenticated or within a session, the lights are going to switch on. If you're not authenticated, let's see how that's going to work and why we actually created the user. So you go to new private window. I'll send the same command, but I'm going to change the on to off. Oh. There we go. Press enter. And if it's not within the five minutes when we have a session open, then it's going to ask for the credentials and it's going to be test, test one, two, three. I sign in and as soon as I sign in, the command is going to go through and we'll see the lamp switching off. Now, there we go. As you can see, commands are pretty much instant. My network is very good, even though I'm using a power line, uh, but it's still going through immediately. And also, if I move this one down a little bit, you can see the virtual text input and why we're using a virtual text input is important because it's sending a text and the text that is being sent is the command itself, which is set like a off in that case and is sending a quick pulse to it. Let's do another example. We are going to switch the switch, but we're going to do it externally. So whenever you're doing it externally, we need a little bit more information, unfortunately. So to do it externally, if you have remote access to the mini server, if it's a mini server gen two, we're going to have remote connect enabled. Now to be able to access remote connect, you need dns.logsoncloud.com and then the serial number of your mini server. 94A, 1242E. And as soon as you push this one in, the address itself is going to resolve. And this is the address that we actually need for the command to work. So on the back of this address, I'm going to add some more information. And what we're going to do is the same def, SPS, IO, and example, VTI. Then I'm going to say set. And now we want to create the commands to the switch itself. Click on I. The switch or the short description for switch is SW, makes sense. And then I'm just going to use toggle, in this case, TG as an input. And again, I'm going to pulse it exactly the same way. So example set um, SW, TG, pulse, and let's push it through. Of course, it's going to ask me to authenticate externally as well. It's important. So test, test, one, two, three, sign in. And as you can see in the background, the command did go through, but nothing happened with the switch because the switch itself is not connected to, to the virtual text input. So if I just copy this one, connect it to the AC connector, save in the mini server, now I'm going to try to push the command again, but this time, because it's actually connected to the switch, it's going to switch it on and off every single time I uh, send the command through because we're sending just toggle. So let's go back to it. There's the command, pushing it again, and the relay switched. If I push it one more time, press enter, switch goes off. Perfect, super, super simple. And as you can see, even though the command is also being sent to the lighting controller, it's not affecting it anyway because we are addressing the specific function block that we want to use, the specific input, and then what we want to do with it. So if I'm sending music commands or audio play commands to the lighting controller, nothing's going to happen. So that is why you can have multiple example VTIs or virtual text inputs connected to different blocks on the same page. Now, that is a simple way but what else can we do with it? Now, I made a little template for us to be able to use it uh, in a more advanced way, I wanna say. Now, let's say we have an example where you're using some, I don't know, third-party uh, 
device or you have a some kind of a server that server needs to send commands to the mini server at a specific point um, and currently you don't have any way of doing it let's say the device that you're using has some kind of http commands or http request that it can output exactly what we're going to do i've made a very very short python script which is basically going to take the information of the mini server the information for the user and then we can create different commands to say to okay switch it to, uh, switch it on switch it off uh, lights to 50 percent or whatever else you want to create now in our case we can also see the response if the response is the same as we had in here response 200 that means that everything went through perfect and everything's good now i am pretty sure that i've already set it up both locally and externally so I'm going to use the switch lights on command, for example, and let's see how that is going to work. Now, I'm going to first do it locally and execute local command. We want to send lights off in my case. Is that the correct one? No, lights are currently off, so we want to send lights on. And now if we execute a script, we should be able to see lights turning on. Perfect. That's what it did. And it's also going to feed back a response to 100, letting us know, yes, it went through. Now, a quick example of what else we can use it for if we say... import time then we can say time dot sleep let's give it five seconds and in five seconds after lights oh well actually we're going to do the reverse in this case because lights are currently off we're going to send a lights on command lights on there we go so now that we have our script on the site, let's actually test it and see if it's up and running and if we can actually use it this way. So I press run, lights off, five seconds, and then it's supposed to send another code, which is lights on. There we go, perfect. Now this is obviously an oversimplified example and there's much more that we can do locally and externally with the API connector, but Obviously, use your imagination, use your own use case, and I hope with this information you can do much more than just that. Now, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any ideas for new videos, please write them down in the comments, and I'll see you next time. Cheers!